Hey, how's it going today? What's going on, everybody? So listen, check this out. I know pretty much about 99% of us own microwaves, right? And we have leftover food. People do a lot of cooking, this and that. And we heat our food back up, okay? Well, do you realize that uh, some foods that we reheat in that microwave can be toxic? That's right. I, I couldn't believe it either, but there's foods that we heat up that can be toxic and it can be harmful to us. I got a story here about it and what certain foods can be toxic to you. So if you want to hear about this, just hang in there because here we go and talk about that right now. Zombie apocalypse. <laughs> Hey, how you doing? Good to see you again, and welcome back to the show. Thanks for stopping by, and as always, hope to just find everybody safe, healthy, and in good spirits. And remember, if you're new here, definitely hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell icon, this way you know next time I come out with a video, and a thumbs up always helps. I appreciate everybody who came back, stopped by, and just checking out the videos, and your comments definitely helps. I, I love to hear from you guys. Definitely leave a comment. I'll get back to you. Everybody's done that. I appreciate that. Everybody gives thumbs up. Everybody subscribe. I appreciate everybody. Thank you so much. It's awesome to hear from you. It's awesome to know that you come back and see what's going on here. So I got this story today about heating food back up and how that can be toxic. Now, like I say, a lot of us have the microwaves. We heat up in microwaves, um, whether we take food to work that was already cooked and we reheat. We got leftovers in the refrigerator. We do what we got to do. We take it out. We heat it up. Well, I never knew it, but there's some food out there that can be toxic when you reheat it. And I came across this story, and it tells us some of the foods and talks about why. So I'm going to share that with you right now. Foods that can actually become toxic when reheated. If you are someone who cooks often, it's hard not to end up with leftovers. You might be feeding other people in addition to yourself or might just be cooking for one. Either way, it's hard to anticipate how much food will be eaten. Plus, leftovers don't seem like the worst outcome. At least that's one less meal to cook in the future. I mean, that, that makes sense, right? Well, wrong. Actually, certain food should never be kept as leftovers, much less reheated for a second meal. The reason... Certain foods may become toxic once, re toxic once reheated and can vary. Certain foods can vary, which, which can be toxic. It may be that food has been stored improperly, and once reheated, it becomes inedible. It could be that the food was stored too long and has passed its expiration date, or it might be that you aren't reheating the food to the correct temperature. Whatever the reason, the food isn't safe anymore and should not be eaten. Reheating um, potentially toxic food isn't something to be taken lightly. Sure, there are some myths about microwaves that aren't worth your time. However, sickness, sickness death, or even amputation as a result of food poisoning from leftovers have all, the, have all occurred before. So see what they're saying is that, you know, you get this food poison, you could get something amputated, you get sick, you know, and there's, and there's death too, you know. So you got to be careful. It's not worth taking the risk of reheating those Tupperware containers just for the ease of a free meal. Avoid disaster by reading on. These are foods that can actually become toxic when reheated. All right, so we're going to get a list now of some food. Rice. Hmm. We, I, I mean, rice is always reheated, right? Chinese food, whatever. Eating leftover rice can be dangerous. Baculus serus, bacteria that causes food poisoning, is the main source of concern. Spores of Baculus serus can be present from the very beginning on rice, even on uncooked grains. Those spores can also remain on cooked rice. However, if cooked rice is left to sit out too long at room temperature, those spores begin to grow bacteria. This is when a real risk of food poison begins. You want to avoid eating this toxic rice as much as possible. Symptoms of food poisoning caused by Bacillus serus include 
vomiting, nausea, diarrhea, and abdominal pain. To avoid getting sick from leftover rice, you can take a few steps. First, let your cooked rice cool quickly, ideally within one hour of cooking. This limits the time the rice is within the danger zone, between 40 and 140 degrees Fahrenheit. You can store cool rice in the refrigerator for three to four days during storage. You, during storage, your leftover rice may become hard and dry and slimy or stinky. These are signs your cooked rice has gone bad. While reheating, make sure your rice reaches 165 degrees Fahrenheit. Either a microwave or a pan will do. You must follow these food safety steps to start to finish because, as the University of Florida explains, proper reheating isn't always enough to kill bacteria. So you got to make sure you heat it up right. Um, they're saying, you know, even though you might heat it back up, if you don't do it the right way, it, it's not going to kill the bacteria. Chicken. All uh, right, chicken, we all know we got to be very careful with chicken, even when you first cook it, man. It's got, you know, a lot of crazy stuff, and I'm a little scared of chicken myself, but, you know, we got to eat. Reheating chicken has its risks. Most people are familiar with the bacteria present in raw chicken, such as Salmonella, Clostridium, Perpharyngitis bacteria, and Campylobacter bacteria. A lot of different bacteria in that chicken, eh? However, these bacteria can remain on chicken if the meat is cooked or reheated incorrectly. You can get food poison caused by salmonella if your chicken doesn't reach the correct temperature when it's reheated. Wow. Reheated chicken can expose you to foodborne illnesses with serious consequences. Salmonella can cause death, but rarely. People most likely to suffer death or other severe salmonella poison symptoms are those in vulnerable groups, such as the elderly, children, pregnant people, and individuals with compromised immune systems. More common, less serious salmonella symptoms include stomach pain, headache, chills, fever, diarrhea, and nausea. Lucky, luckily, you can avoid these side effects by taking precautions when reheating your chicken. After cooking the chicken to proper temperature, 165 degrees Fahrenheit, you should put it away with one hour. You should put it away within one hour. As with cooked rice, once stored in the refrigerator, cooked chicken will last three to four days. When it's time to reheat, you need to bring the entire chicken's temperature back up to 165 degrees Fahrenheit. Some people think this is this can't happen if they reheat it. Some people think this can't happen if they reheat chicken in the microwave. Others like Healthline think the safest bet is reheating your leftovers the same way they first were cooked. Using a meat thermometer can eliminate the guessing game. So they're saying cook it the way you cook, I guess, in the oven, whatever, and use your meat thermometer to check the temperature. We're trying to say don't use the microwave, but, you know, a lot of times it's all you got to do. It's all you got, you know, especially if you're at work or somewhere outside. All right, how about potatoes? Just like rice, potatoes are a starchy food that you should be careful when reheating. Both rice and potatoes are carbohydrate-rich foods that contain the bacteria Bacillus cerus, which causes food poisoning. If not properly stored or warmed the correct temperature, the bacteria can grow on leftover potatoes, making them toxic to eat. Potatoes have been linked to cases of botulism which the Center of Disease Control and Prevention describes as a rare but serious illness caused by a toxin that attacks the body's nerves. A botulism outbreak that occurred in 1997 affecting 17 people was tracked back to potatoes. Even as recently as 2020, an 80-year-old woman died of botulism caused by potatoes. According to Food Safety News, the source of the botulism was potatoes stored at room temperature for two weeks. As the Food Poison Bulletin explains, the greatest risk for potato-based botulism comes from baked potatoes stored in the refrigerator and aluminum foil. The foil can create a low oxygen environment where the pathogen can grow and produce a toxin. Being in the refrigerator does not help. 
The best way to avoid these potato-borne illnesses is through safe storage. After cooking your potatoes, remove all aluminum foil, store the potatoes in a shallow, airtight container or plastic bag for three to five days. For safety, eat them as soon as possible. When reheating them, on the side, you know, be careful on the side of caution to make sure they are piping hot and cooked through. So in other words, really cook them nice. Don't just warm them up. Cook them. All right, so here's another one. Mushrooms. You like mushrooms? I like mushrooms. Leftover mushrooms are another food you want to handle cautiously. Like potatoes, there are concerns about botulism associated with mushrooms. That's because mushrooms are low-acid vegetables. Foods with pH levels lower than 4.6 can't grow the bacteria that causes botulism infection. Foods, okay, that's because mushrooms are low in, low acid vegetable. Foods with a pH level lower than 4.6 can't grow bacteria that causes botulism infection. I don't want to tell you that, but. However, less acidic foods like mushrooms can grow it. So they're saying that, that mushrooms are less acidic, so they can grow this freaking bacteria. If you combine cooked mushrooms with low oxygen environments, the risk for botulism is even higher. E. coli, salmonella, and other bacteria that can cause food poisoning or even death can also be spread through cooked leftover mushrooms. So be very careful with those mushrooms. Definitely cook them good. And I'll be honest with you, I don't even think I'll reheat them again. I'll throw them right in the garbage, whatever's left over. Seems pretty serious with these mushrooms, you know. To avoid regrettable errors in cooking storage and reheating mushrooms, as with the other leftovers on the list, you should cool the mushrooms as soon as possible after their first cooking before putting them in the refrigerator. You should also set your refrigerator's temperature between 36 and 38 degrees Fahrenheit. This ensures your fridge food stay out of the USDA's aforementioned danger zone, which begins at 40 degrees Fahrenheit. The mushroom should last about three to five days. That seems like the norm here. These like three to five days. When reheating, Valuable Kitchen says you can use the microwave, oven, or stovetop. Just be sure the mushrooms reach 165 degrees Fahrenheit before you start eating them. Seems like everything when you want to reheat seems you want to go to 165 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, let's talk about seafood now. Leftover seafood is another thing that can become toxic to reheat and eat. There are two ways to get poison from fish. Scombroid poisoning and ciguatra Siguetra poisoning. Scombroid poisoning occurs after eating fish that have high levels of histamine due to improper food handling. As for Siguetoria poisoning, there are over 400 species of fish that naturally contain this toxin, which creates this illness. You can't stop Siguetora. I'm going to spell for you C I G U A T E R A. Siguetora. Terror, cigateria poisoning through proper food safety, but other forms of seafood based food poison can be prevented. First, you need to choose seafood that hasn't gone bad to begin with. That means buying seafood that was immediately caught and then frozen. You can also purchase previous frozen fish, but make sure it doesn't smell pungent or appear discolored. Frozen seafood may also be thawed in a refrigerator soon before cooking. Once you have cooked seafood ready to store for leftovers, you want to follow many of the aforementioned food safety tips. Store the cooked fish in a refrigerator set below 40 degrees Fahrenheit within two hours of cooking and eat it within four days of storing. When reheating, make sure that the leftover fish is cooked entirely through. Test the seafood to make sure every inch of it has reached 165 degrees Fahrenheit. There's that 165 degrees again. From Hunger to Hope recommends using the oven or the stove and skipping the microwave. They don't even want to use the microwave to reheat fish. Nitrate-rich vegetables. 
In the food safety world, there's a concern surrounding the reheating of nitrate-rich vegetables. Unlike the food poisoning caused by leftover chicken, rice, or seafood, the way that nitrate-rich vegetables become toxic is a little different. The reheating itself is the part that is thought to be dangerous. Concerns surrounding nitrates and nitrates come from both compounds, links to diseases like cancer. However, it is not easy for them to become toxic. As Livestrong explains, you don't need to worry too much about exposing yourself to harmful nitrates through vegetables. The real concerns come from synthetic nitrates or nitrates, nitrates or nitrates, like sodium potassium nitrate or nitrate, which are usually found in processed foods such as hot dogs or bacon. When these compounds enter the body, they are converted into nitrosamines, nitrosamines which the environmental working group says are where the real health risks come from. Also, you don't need to be too afraid of consuming vegetables high in nitrate as they contain other vitamins that prevent them from becoming harmful nitrosamines. Foods high in natural source of nitrate include vegetables like spinach, bok choy, lettuce, and carrots. If you reheat any of these nitrate-rich vegetables and they become dried up or shriveled, you would be con concentrating the amount of potentially harmful nitrates in your meal and exposing yourself to them. To avoid making your food toxic, don't overcook your leftover vegetables into a shriveled up mess. So now they say don't overcook these into anything kind of shriveled up. All right, let's move on to this processed meats. Processed meats. Reheating processed meat contains the risk of exposing yourself to synthetic nitrates. These nitrates, although used to preserve the shelf life and color of processed meats, can be harmful to your health. The other concern is cholesterol. The other concern is cholesterol oxidation products, which are the main reason some think you should never microwave processed meats. That's because some research shows that heating animal products results in a formation of cholesterol oxidation products, which have been linked to a disease. Some think the effects are even worse when processed meat is heated in the microwave, which has been shown to produce more of the cholesterol oxidation products than other forms of heating. To make matters worse, diseases like coronary artery disease and are associated with ingesting cholesterol oxidation products. Imagine reheating those processed meats a second time and possibly exposing yourself to even more COPS. As these are called, we can all avoid this by not reheating processed meats. So don't even, don't even reheat processed meats like hot dogs, sausages, bacon, salami. Don't even do it in a microwave. So they're saying, don't even reheat these things up. It's kind of crazy. Ah, man. How about pork? You may have tried to reheat a few different pork products in your day. Pork can sometimes come in a form of processed meat. For example, bacon, Canadian bacon, or ham, all forms of processed pork. As we know, risks come with the reheating processed meat, such as the possible exposures to harmful synthetic nitrates or cholesterol oxidation products. On the other hand, there are forms of unprocessed pork, such as pork chops, pork loin, or pork ribs, which may also become toxic as leftovers. That's crazy. So pork chops, you don't want to eat. It's all a lot of stuff here, man. Didn't realize it. Trisinosis is one of the most common forms of food poisoning associated with pork. This foodborne illness comes when someone consumes raw or undercooked pork, which has been contaminated with the larvae of a worm called Trichella spirellus. Once the parasite enters your body, it creates uncomfortable side effects such as diarrhea, constipation, abdominal pain, headaches, chills, and more. This nightmarish form of food poison should be avoided at all costs. If you don't reheat pork to the proper temperature, you might be at risk of contracting trichinosis. T-R-I-C-H-I-N-O-S-I-S. Trichinosis? 
Additionally, you may be susceptible to other foodborne illnesses like salmonella and listeria if your leftover pork is heated is preheat is reheated the wrong way. You should always reheat your pork to at least 165 degrees. Now, remember that number, guys, 165 to keep on repeating, 165 to reheat. It's not like all over the place. Everything seems to want to get reheated to 165 degrees. Fahrenheit to avoid poisoning. poisoning. In addition to following other common food safety practices and cooling storage and following used by dates. So you definitely don't want it to, to do that. Learning about all the risks associated with reheating cooking oil may change your life. You might start to think twice about reheating the leftover Chinese food or pizza slices. Reheating oil could potentially make the oil more carcinogenic, carcinogenic, increase the amount of cholesterol, or make it more acidic. According to the outlet addition, according to the outlet, additional side effects like weight gain, heart disease, obsessity, and diabetes could also occur when you ingest reheated oil. Hmm. This is crazy. How about, what is this, buffet food? This is probably more common sense than scientific knowledge, but you shouldn't reheat leftover buffet food. So if you go to a buffet and bring stuff home, don't reheat it. As with other leftovers, that's because the original food was possibly not kept fresh enough to begin with. Potentially, content, potentially toxic causes of foodborne illness like nor norovirus, salmonella, and E. coli can be spread through buffets. Buffet food becomes toxic when it is not reheated to an adequate temperature or kept hot enough while it's being stored in trays. Wow. Wow. It, <laughs> breast milk. I mean, I don't know how many of us have breast milk in the refrigerator, but even less common than reheated buffet food, breast milk isn't something we all find ourselves popping into the microwave daily. For parents of newborns, however, heating milk for their babies is something that needs to happen often. However, if done incorrectly, the process of reheating milk could be harmful to the infants. Per the CDC, microwave and breast milk can destroy beneficial nutrients and potentially turn burn a baby's mouth. That's why a microwave should never be the method used to door breast milk or reheat it. Instead, the FDA recommends reheating breast milk using different methods. You can heat breast milk by placing a baby bottle on the hot running water until the bottle is hot. Alternatively, you can heat water in a pan, remove the pan from the heat, and temporarily place the bottle into the water-filled pan, according to the baby's brew. Breast milk should be heated to body temperature, 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, if breast milk is heated to 104 degrees. If breast milk is heated to 104 degrees Fahrenheit, it could damage the milk. Play it safe by safely heating your milk to body temperature using FDA-recommended methods. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. That's crazy. Even the baby food they're saying, if you, if you feed your baby baby food, be careful with that too. Any method of reheating leftovers for babies can be risky. That's because babies are particularly vulnerable to foodborne illnesses and their symptoms. Children under five have weakened immune systems that make it harder for them to fight food poisoning. If you must reheat your baby's food a second time, here are a few precautions to take. Once open, baby food lasts a maximum of three days. While reheating baby center, recommends using a thermometer to make sure the food's temperature has risen to 165 degrees. Certain foods will require a lower temperature, but especially if there is a mix of different ingredients in your baby's puree, you'll want to play it on a safe side. That's crazy. Crazy, crazy. Per homemade baby food recipes, if you must reheat your baby food, do it only once. Don't try to reheat your leftovers a second time. This is a common recommendation for all leftovers because the more times you reheat and cool your food, the more potential there is for food poisoning. God, man, that's that's a lot of stuff going on there, no? I, it almost makes me never want to reheat anything over again. It's crazy. I mean, how many times are you always, you know, especially my, my wife makes a lot of food and there's always leftovers. 
next day we have for lunch or whatever we do, reheat it. Um, but at the main number there we heard was 165 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you got to heat food up, make sure you check it. Make sure it's really, you know, hot. Make sure it's 165. I mean, uh, if you're at work or something, I'm sure you don't carry a thermometer with you. But, you know, if you have one at home, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe you guys are going to look into that more. You know, something else that you you eat or something you want to check into, check it out. Because uh, it seems like reheating food can be pretty toxic if you don't do it the right way. But then again, I think we all do it, you know. And you also say, too, about the Tupperware and stuff, that plastic, you got to be careful heating it up in there because that can put out toxins, too. You know, if you got food you're going to heat up, make sure you put it on a dish if possible, you know. Well, hope you guys got something out of that. I kind of learned something there myself, too, about a lot of stuff that's going on reheating food because I do it often, you know. But thanks again for stopping by. I appreciate it. Definitely, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell icon so you don't actually come out with a video. Definitely hit that thumbs up. I appreciate it all. Appreciate your uh, comments. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think about that story. Let me know if you've got sick. Let me know if you know anything about that, like what's happening, you know? But again, guys, stay safe, stay healthy. Be careful out there. Take care of yourselves. Life is short. Live it to the fullest. All right? So until next time, take care of yourself. I'll see you around. I'm out of here. So long. Oh,